Hey guys, today we are doing a deep dive into the BenQ GW2283. It's a 22 inch monitor with eye care technology. It's a high quality monitor, but on the cheap, a perfect solution for working or studying from home without spending a ton of money. So right off the bat here, let's talk about price. These monitors cost about $160 American each, and I picked up two of these on Amazon to create a comfortable home workplace. By the way, links for everything seen here today will be in the description below. Here's what's on the menu. We're going to start off by setting some expectations on my desired home workspace. Then I'm going to show you what's included in the box. We're going to talk about the specifications of the monitors, including what ports are included on the back of the screen. After that, I'm going to install the stand and show you how that operates. Even though I won't be using it in my final setup, I've picked up one of these dual monitor arms to save on desk space. I'll quickly show you the install process of those arms. And once we get things up and running, we're going to check out some video playback, including gameplay. Then I'll demo how this screen can be used in conjunction with a security camera setup in any room of your home or office. Lastly, we're going to check out some of the eye care settings, which is important if you have a lot of daily screen time. And then we're going to end off with some final thoughts. So lots to cover today. Let's get rolling. Okay, so for me, let's talk about the purpose of this setup. I wanted two quality screens that weren't going to give out or cause me trouble down the road. I'm not interested in flaky hardware with a history of problems like missing pixels, black lines, or flickering screens. I would be using this screen for a home office, including Word, Excel, email, watching YouTube videos in some downtime, or maybe even playing a game or two, but I don't need a 4K screen or that expense. I want the option to hook up the screen to a gaming console if desired, but again, I don't want the expense of 4K. I have a small desk and I will be sitting close to the screens, so I don't want any large screens to make me feel sick or give me vertigo after working from home all day, so a 22 to 24 inch monitor will suffice. I also didn't want to spend a ton of money on this setup, so I ended up finding a pretty sweet solution at an awesome price point. Also, the number of five star Amazon ratings and bonus features made this purchase a no brainer, and now I have a pretty sweet setup. Let's check out what's in the box. So when I slide out the styrofoam, everything is very nicely laid out. In this bag, we have warranty information, a quick start guide, and some safety instructions, and this looks like regulatory information. Next, we have a VGA or a D-sub cable. The screen supports the older VGA technology, and in case you don't have a cable, they've included one, but there's no HDMI cable included. I'll add links to the ones that I used in the description below for you to check out. And here we have the power cord, pretty standard. I like that there's no adapter. That's great news, no brick to worry about. The cable looks like it's good quality, nice and thick, and just over five feet in length or 1.5 meters. These here are two pieces of the stand. We're gonna put that aside for now. And of course, sandwiched between the foam, we have the monitor. It's a 21.5 inch screen rounded up to be called a 22 inch monitor. It's full HD displaying in 1080p with an aspect ratio of 16 to nine. And just check out how perfect that matte finish looks. Wow, super clean. I'm quite impressed. One of the big features I love about this monitor, which is also a bonus feature for me, is the super thin frame. BenQ calls it frameless, but as you can see, the frame is super thin. This is important for me because I want to use the monitor side by side, and I don't like any gap between the two. And this will certainly help keep that to a minimum and give me the feel of one large workspace or one large monitor. At the bottom of the screen, underneath the brand name, we have the environmental lighting sensor to help the screen adjust its brightness depending on lighting conditions. More to come on that. At the bottom of each side of the device, we have what looks like two vents. This is actually where the speakers are located. The sound quality isn't great, and I'll do a demo of that here shortly once we get things up and running. Towards the front right speaker, we have the power and menu buttons. Now here on the back of the monitor, let's peel off that logo protection sticky, and right below we have the four screw holes for the mounting plate. They're 100 millimeters apart, so if you plan on using a desk mount, make sure your mounting plate supports this distance. We'll dive into getting that set up here in a minute. In the meanwhile, let's jump down and see where that power cord is connected. Pretty standard. 
And moving along to the center, we have a slot for the included stand. Notice there's a release button on top of this mount to remove the stand. Here is a quick demo of how that works and setting up the stand. It fits together nicely and then slides in till it clicks. I use a pin to push the release mechanism so I can slide the stand out. So speaking of the stand, check out this bonus feature. I hate looking at cords, but this solves it very well with a cord storage door on the back of the stand. Simply slide it up to the unlock position and remove the cover. You can direct your cables through here and keep things nice and tidy. That's a pretty cool feature to take advantage of that space. And just a final note here on the stand, it doesn't allow the monitor to twist or swivel, but it does tilt. Here is a look at the extent of the tilt with the included base. Going back to the ports, next we have two HDMI inputs, which I'll be using, then a D-Sub or VGA. And moving along, we have an audio line in and an output for a headset or external speakers. Pretty standard options. And as you may know, the HDMI will also bring audio to the monitors. And finally, in the bottom corner here, we have a slot for a lock in case you need to tether it up to prevent theft. The monitor has beaten my expectations so far. Also get this, it has a refresh rate of 75 Hertz with a response time of one millisecond over HDMI. That's perfect for a smooth video and gives me the option for some gaming without worrying about lag or ghosting. So before we go any farther, let's pop open the box here for the monitor arms and get that set up. Here is a time lapse of getting that installed onto the back of one of the screens. The setup is great for smaller monitors and it'll hold the monitor quite sturdy onto my desk. Installing the mount was very straightforward, so I'm not going to bore you with those details here. I've installed the post and the arms onto my desk and now we're going to drop on the monitors. And after some fine tuning, we're all done. Check it out. This is quite the impressive little setup here. Very clean, lots of desk space for books and whatnot. With a little adjusting of the arms, the monitors fit together perfectly with no visible gap in between. That's exciting. All right guys, so here's a quick rundown sitting here at this small desk. Got my laptop. My laptop only has one HDMI connection, so that's connected to one of the monitors. I'm using the USB-C port to HDMI to connect to the other monitor. And as you can tell, it's a pretty small desk and I'm fairly close to the screens. So this size monitor is not overwhelming at all and it's pretty easy on the eyes, which is a really good selling point. So I'm quite happy with the setup and sitting here for, for a while and uh, it's working out great so far. Up next, we have some footage and audio. I brought one of the screens back down to the studio here for some better lighting and placed it on one of its stands. It might be a little bit hard to appreciate the quality here through the camera lens, so I'm recording it in 4K, so hopefully you can see how sharp the screen is. And here is another shot. I'm pretty excited here. Very nice. The colors also look fantastic. The skin tones, the contrast are spot on. Let's move the camera around and look at a few different viewing angles. Very impressive to say the least, and for $160, what a steal. Now as you can tell, the audio isn't perfect, but since I'll be using a headset, not a deal breaker. And that's for listening to birds and any surrounding sounds. Now I'm going to share a few clips of some gameplay video. I don't see any jitter or ghosting here. Looks very nice, no issues that I can see. For those of you who follow my channel, know that I talk a lot about security cameras. So let's integrate this monitor into that system. In this scenario, we have the monitor connected in my network room to my Reolink NVR or network video recorder over HDMI. As you can see, the colors look great and this is a perfect little monitor for this kind of setup. Let's zoom in here a little bit and see that quality even closer. The NVR is here in my basement, but I can use network extenders to broadcast that HDMI signal anywhere on my home network, allowing me to set up this monitor in any room where I have access to that network. Here I have the monitor set up in my kitchen where I can quickly glance over and keep an eye on things. And here is the monitor again in my wife's craft room so she can keep an eye on the property. Again, the HDMI signal is passing from the NVR over my home network to the monitor with no lag. 
This monitor obviously works perfect as part of my security camera system and a dedicated video for these extenders can be found on my channel. So do check that out for more information. Now the last topic I want to talk about is the eye protection features of this monitor, which is another bonus for me. Again, as I'm recording the screen here, you might see some wavy lines since the camera's shutter and the monitor's refresh rate aren't in sync. This is not too bad here and I'm zoomed in pretty good. The first feature is eye care. The screen's brightness will adjust given the amount of ambient light present in the room. I'll go ahead and activate this feature and use my bright studio lights to represent daylight and I'll place my finger over the light sensor to represent darkness. I'll turn on the brightness intelligence setting. The sensitivity is 50% by default. We know that eye care is active because we see this icon showing the current ambient brightness in the bottom right hand corner. I'll go ahead and place my finger over the sensor and the icon indicates a low level of light. And at this point, the monitor is going to lower its brightness. I'm going to fast forward here so you can better see the difference in the brightness. And now when I lift my finger, the screen is going to get brighter to better match the lighting in the room. I'll replay that and fast forward it so you can better see the change. I've been using this feature for a few months now and it's really nice on the eyes, especially when working when the sun is shining into the office and I need the screen brighter versus at night when I like it a bit dimmer. Pretty cool. The second eye protection feature takes us to picture mode where we have several display options like low blue light, movie, game, and so on. The low blue light option is the real eye saver here. As I move through each of these options, you can see more and more blue light getting removed from the image. My preference here is the first one, multimedia. Checking out the other display options, and as I scroll through the options, the screen's brightness changes. All right, folks, that takes us to the end of the review. I've been using these two monitors now for about six months, and I still love them. They are the perfect setup for a home office, a student's workspace, or even a security camera display. The size is perfect, not too overwhelming. The quality is perfect for my office work, watching YouTube videos, and for some casual gaming. Perfect setup without visible cables, and I really like the bonus features, like those tiny borders, which make my screen fit perfectly together with little to no gap. And the eye care features are just awesome. No eye strain at the end of the day. And of course, the most important part, the price. A great monitor without breaking the bank. I hope that you found this information helpful. If so, show your support with a thumbs up and then hit that subscribe button to be notified when I release new videos on home tech DIY projects you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.